Uh, I'm Brother John Paul. I'm a Dominican friar studying here at the Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C. Um, towards the priesthood, God willing, in two years. So I actually grew up Lutheran. Uh, all of my extended family are Missouri Synod and Wisconsin Synod Lutherans. Um, they are celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Reformation this year, very passionately. Uh, and then in high school, I went to a non-denominational Protestant school, met a lot of different types of Christians. Um, and then in college, I, I branched out and started exploring uh, a lot of different types of Protestant churches. And feeling that God was calling me to the ministry, I felt like I really had, you know, the, the duty to, pre to preach Christ. And at first, I could talk about just my, my experience of Christ in my own life, and that seemed to be enough. But after a while, as I started to lead more and more Bible studies and, and larger groups and give talks and such, uh, and also meet with another group of guys that were also looking at becoming pastors, it sort of struck me, you know, uh, why is it okay that we go out there and we say, this is the truth about God, this is what the Bible says, and yet we step behind the curtain and we all have slightly different views of this. And we say, oh, well, it's okay, we're different denominations, but, you know, that wouldn't have cut it in, say, engineering, as I was studying before. So why, why does this cut it with something that's even more important? with God. Before I even dug into historical issues or specific theological issues, I just started with reading through the Gospel. I actually didn't get further than the Gospel of Matthew, but just verse by verse, each day, literally trying to live this, and reading this as if not, you know, this is what Christ said 2,000 years ago, how do I apply it today, but really placing myself, if I was standing in front of Jesus Christ himself, and he said this to me, how would I live? And as I started to follow that, I started to realize, oh, you know, when, when I was in the place of the rich young man and Christ asked him, are you willing to go give to the poor, sell all that you have and come follow me? And so I started to ask, you know, well, well where do people live like this? And the only saints I knew at the time were uh, St. Francis of Garden Statue fame and, uh, and also Mother Teresa. And as I dug deeper and started to re read some of these early religious rules, like the rule of St. Benedict, the rule of St. Augustine, and, and reading out the orders, the Franciscans, the Dominicans, it was, oh, this is something foreign to my faith life in the background, but what they're doing at the heart of all of these ways of life is just literally trying to live the gospel as they feel Christ is calling them to live. And I wasn't yet sure at that point if I was called to live something like that, but surely Christ was calling someone to live that way, and it seemed that it was only within the Catholic Church that people were really able to radically follow Christ in this very literal way, which is the religious life. God bless my mother, she's a wonderful woman, and uh, she, she's definitely warmed up to this after a while. Uh, when I first actually told her that I was thinking about entering the Catholic Church, she, she begged me, and I said, you know, I've, I've studied this for almost a year now, I've gone through so much of church history, gone through the scripture, wrestled theologically, prayed, and I feel like God is calling me here and I'm gonna meet with a priest this week. And she begged me, please, please, just, just promise me you're, you'll pray for another week before you meet with this priest. And I could tell she was really upset, so I said, okay, mom, I, I, will, I love you and I will pray for another week, so I did. As I was going through the RCIA program to meet the other students in the RCIA program, that they all love Jesus very much, they're entering the Catholic Church, we actually had Benedictine monks at Penn State where I entered the Catholic Church and she could see, oh, these guys are like, whoa, really seriously Catholic and religious, but really love Jesus too. This isn't what I've been told, especially again, her coming from a Lutheran background. I actually took her to Rome. This was a very powerful experience. I took her to Rome right before I entered the Dominican order and we went to an audience with Pope Benedict. So when Pope Benedict comes out, you know, kind of like at a World Youth Day event, all the young people are waving banners from their countries or from their, you know, cities or their groups and, and cheering. And, and she actually teared up and said, you know, oh my gosh, like there's, there's so much love and so much life here. Like, no one would believe me if I told them that like, this is what it was like. And so it was beautiful her, to her to see that. And now, uh, you know, meeting the brothers and the community here, she's, she's adopted them. Um, whenever I was on sports teams, she could sort of understand like, oh, I'm one of the team moms, so they're all kind of like my sons. And that's kind of, I think, the way she, she now views the Dominicans, that, oh, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, a Dominican mom, and these are all my sons. So she, uh, she does enjoy that, and, uh, and she'll be joining us um, this Friday at the March for Life, and she'll be hopefully marching with the Dominicans. So she's, uh, 
she's, she's warmed up to us and seen that we, we do very much love Jesus. This Dominican team, Mama, she could have like bring fruit snacks for all the Dominicans at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to see. We'll have to see.